Hey everyone, this is John Buck back with another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. And in this video we're going to talk about difference equations and z-transforms and how we can use the z-transform to find the system function from a difference equation. One of the great things about z-transforms is it lets us turn problems involving time delays like difference equations into algebra problems, which are much simpler to work with. We'll also see in this video how knowing things about how the properties of the region of convergence relate to properties of the system help us uniquely find the system uh, and, and identify the region of convergence based on system properties, uh, which would be helpful if we were going to go on and find uh, the impulse response. Okay, so let's uh, switch over to the whiteboard and see how this works. Okay, so for the example we're doing today, uh, difference equations in the Z transform, we want to find the system function H of Z for the stable system described by the difference equation Y of N minus 13 halves or 13 twelfths y of n minus 1 minus plus 1 quarter y of n minus 2 is equal to 2 times x of n plus a half x of n minus 1. So the first step is just to use the z transform properties going right across the two main properties being that we want to use uh, linearity and uh, the delay property. Remember the delay property says that if I have say y of n minus 1 its z transform is z to the minus 1 times y of z, right? When we delay in time, we multiply by z to the minus 1. So if I t use that property, let me just sort of move that over to the side here for a second out of my way. Uh, I'll take the z transform one term at a time here. With, so I have y of z. The z transform in the next term is 13 hat 12th times z to the minus 1 y of z plus one quarter times z to the minus two y of z and all this is equal to two x of z plus one half z to the minus one x of z and then the next step should be familiar from when we did similar problems with Fourier transforms which is we're going to factor the y of z and x of z out front so if I pull a y of z out front, I get 1 minus 13 twelfths z to the minus 1 plus 1 quarter z to the minus 2. And I pull the x of z out front on the right-hand side of the equation, I get an x, oh, I get x of z times 2 plus 1 half z to the minus 1. And now to find the system function, we remember that h of z is equal to y of z over x of z. So to get the equation above into that form, I'm going to div multiply both sides of the equation by, uh, or to maybe divide both sides of the equation by x of z and by 1 uh, minus 13 twelfths z to the minus 1 plus 1 quarter z to the minus 2. All right, so if I go and multiply both sides of the equation, I'm only going to write it on the right side, but I'm actually going to do this to both sides. To simplify, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over this. I'll get things in the form I want, right? Because when I do this on the right-hand side, I'm sorry, on the left-hand side, the thing in parentheses cancel, and I'm left with y over z. Y over z right? I'll have y over z on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, the x of z's cancel. Let me just sort of show that for a second. Right On the right-hand side, these two cancel. And so when I do that, what I'm left with on the right-hand side is 2 plus a half z to the minus 1. And then the denominator has this 1 minus 13 twelfths z to the minus 1 plus 1 quarter z to the minus 2. Okay, so that's the algebraic form of our z-transform, but we know that every z-transform needs an art of region of convergence as well. And so we need to find the region of convergence, and the key to any region of convergence is always about where are the poles. So to do that, we need to, to the poles are the roots of the denominator. So we need to factor the denominator. Maybe our, our first step in factoring it, if you're not used to doing these in negative powers of z, is to multiply the left and right side by the highest negative power of z that appears. And I'm going to uh, make myself some space. I'm going to clean this up since we don't really need it anymore. 
and this way we'll get everything in positive powers of z. So when I multiply this through by z squared, I'll get 2z squared plus 1 half z. And on the right hand side I'll get z squared minus 13 twelfth z plus 1 quarter. And so if you're not used to working in negative powers of z, it's easier to factor this sometimes or you can put it into a quadratic formula, your calculator, MATLAB, any number of things to solve that. So I'm going to pause and go do that and I'll come back with the roots when it's factored. Okay, so after factoring it, I end up with something in this form here. I can pull the z out front. Uh, but the main thing I'm factoring is the denominator. And so what this tells me from looking at it is that I have poles at z equals three quarters and z equals a third. So I'm going to, oh, and I'm going to move to a new page now and, and sketch a pole zero diagram uh, that will include those poles so that I can think about what is the region of convergence going with this. And, and the key to this is going to be hiding up here is this word stable. That knowing the system stable tells me something about the region of convergence. But let me sketch my pole zero diagram first. Okay, so here's my unit circle, and I said my poles were at three quarters and one third, which would be about here. And so the other important property is to say, well, I have, while well, looking at this, I would have three choices for the region of convergence, right? One choice would be to be inside a third, right? So that would look like inside a third looks like that, the blue region. Another choice is, is uh, between a third and three quarters. And that would be the green region that I've just shaded there. And the last choice would be z bigger than uh, one third. Oh, I realize I should have been writing these up as I drew them. So let me add those two. So I'll have right. So I have z less than a third in blue, between one third and three quarters for the magnitude of z is in green. And then the last one I'll draw in in red would be z greater than three quarters. Okay, and so now the, uh, figuring out which of these three choices is the right one for our system. Well, again, the clue was on the previous page. Is, is this word here stable? I can even sort of highlight it, right? right? A stable system tells us something about the region of convergence. Remember from our, our properties we already saw in the previous videos that if the system is stable, stable system implies that the region of convergence is the same as saying that the region of convergence includes the unit circle. Right, at magnitude of z equals 1. So that tells me this choice here, the red one, is the stable ROC. So if we want to find the system function, we already have the h of z, we can now go back to the previous page and also say that for this ROC, the uh, region of convergence is that it's z greater than three quarters. Me. Scoop this over. All right, so here's my, I mean, this is my answer here. My region, my system function for h of z, I can write it in this form or I can put it back to negative powers of z by multiplying numerator and denominator by z to the minus squared again, and I'll have uh, 2 plus 1 half z to the minus 1. When I do that, multiply it by z to the minus 2 in the denominator, each of those will turn one of these into the, the first order terms we're used to seeing. All right, so I'd have it in this form, and this would be very helpful. If what I wanted to do next, I'm not going to do it now, but if I wanted the problem asked me for the impulse response, I could now do partial fractions, get an impulse response, and, and, and by, from the partial fractions from a sum of first order terms. Uh, one other comment before I go, what if, what if we had a slightly different problem? So this, again, just to be clear, this is my answer for the stable system with this. Maybe it's worth just taking a second to say, what if we had had a slightly different problem which is instead of the stable system, I go back up here and I say, what if I look for the causal system? So 
So if I want the causal system with this difference equation, well, causal systems have a, a right-sided impulse response, right? We know causal is, is, is right-sided. Causal systems have right-sided impulse responses. And so a right-sided impulse response means the ROC goes outward from the largest finite pole. So if I go back to my pole zero diagram here for a second, Again, I'd say, well, where's which ROC is outside the largest stable pole, largest uh, finite pole? It's the same one. So I'd actually get whether the system had was specified, whether th the problem told me the system was stable, or if it told me it was causal. Either one would be the same ROC in this case. In this case, because all the poles are inside the unit circle. Okay, so so that's another variation on these problems you see sometimes as you're given a difference equation and told the system is causal, and then you have to go find the system function. Okay, so that's all for this time. I'll see you in the next video.